My name is Jordan Daniels. Uh, during my MBA program, I had the opportunity to participate in a number of case competitions. What I really liked about case competitions is that they challenge you to understand a problem and formulate a solution, but they also challenge you to effectively communicate to an audience. And a presentation is your main tool to do this. Today, I will very quickly review some tips and tricks that I've learned about case competition presentations. Before you start any presentation, regardless if it's a case competition, school presentation, or a work presentation, you need to know your audience. In a case competition, the audience will be specified somewhere within the case. And before you do anything else, before you even read the rest of the case, take a few moments to try to understand the audience. Now, what are their goals and motivations? What are they interested in? What's their position? Who do they report to? Now, what are they concerned about? Is there a new product coming out on the market or macroeconomic trends that are threatening the company? The more you know your audience, the more effectively you'll be able to understand the problem within the case and formulate a solution. Once you have an understanding of the problem and an idea of your proposed solution, it's time to start building the presentation. Now, the first key point is to be clear. There's a misconception out there that the best solution wins case competitions. Now, a lot of the case competitions I've been in it's been a good solution that's one, but the determining factor is more around the clarity of communication than it is around the quality of the solution. Slide layouts can really help improve the clarity of your presentations. The best practice is to keep one idea for every slide and then support that idea with three to five points. If you're getting into situations where you have a lot of material to go through, or you really want to emphasize each point and keep the audience's attention, you can use animations to hide different aspects of the presentation or bring up points one by one to maintain that focus on the current point. If slides are getting a little bit too heavy with too much material, it's always possible to use multiple slides. The second key for case competition presentations is to be concise. Now, this is very closely related to the first point on clarity. But basically, once you have your idea, stay on that idea and develop it through the text or the visual on your slide. To create a concise presentation, it's important to use your words wisely. A lot of text on a slide can be distracting. It causes the audience to read ahead and to not focus on the point that you're trying to make. A good practice is to break out the key points and then speak to the material. For example, speak to the slide. Alternatively, pictures and diagrams can be used to convey the same idea, but in fewer words. So all three boxes here effectively say the same thing with various levels of conciseness. Once you've developed clear and concise slides, the next activity is to determine whether or not those slides provide value to the overall presentation. Do they effectively communicate your understanding of the problem or your proposed solution to the audience? And when determining this, your understanding of the audience is absolutely critical. The test I like to do with my slides is called the so what test. Basically, I put myself in the shoes of the audience and I ask, so what? So what is this presentation trying to tell me? So why should I care about this? What are the implications of this idea? If there isn't a clear line between what the presentation is telling me and what I care about, what my motivations are as an audience, then it really isn't providing value to the overall presentation. Beyond the tips above, it's important to be creative with your presentation slides and your presentation style. Case competitions offer a unique opportunity to practice public speaking in stressful situations, but also low risk situations. Use this opportunity to your advantage and try different things. Be creative. Try to find a presentation style that works for you. Even if you're not successful within the case competitions, the practice in finding your own style will help you become a more confident and effective presenter. Finally, work as a team and have fun. Normally, there are four people on a case competition team. 
And if you don't work together, you're going to have a very hard time developing and delivering a clear, concise presentation that provides value to the audience. A good attitude and a collaborative approach within the team is essential. And after the competition, you'll still be friends and classmates with your team. And don't lose sight of that.